Hi, I'm Steve Panaccio with Pfizer, and I'm here today to talk with Dave Swinford of Perlmeyer and Partners about ISS and what do you do when ISS recommends a no vote against your company. So Dave, what do you do? ISS comes in, they said, here's your report, and we're going to recommend a vote against your say on pay. I think the first thing you do is assemble a team to deal with it. Uh, internally, I think you have HR, the executive compensation person, you have legal, you have investor relations, and then I think from the outside, your proxy solicitor, who is very important to the process, your compensation committee advisor, and potentially outside counsel, depending upon how you use outside counsel for compensation purposes. Okay, so now you have your team, you have everybody you need. What do you do next? There are a couple of things that you, you need to do at the same time. One is you review the ISS report, of course. Sometimes there are simply errors in it. Sometimes there's misunderstandings. You also need to figure out you know, what are really behind the criticisms of your program. It could be simply uh, a pay for performance misalignment. It's purely a matter of numbers. Sometimes there are a number of other issues that are raised. I think you have to analyze those and start to develop what are going to be the key messages to the shareholders when you engage with them, which was going to be a part of this next step. And you decide whether or not you need to uh, put together some kind of either rebuttal proxy or some kind of supplemental filing to get more information out to the shareholders because you're going to be developing a strategy to go engage with your shareholders directly to try to blunt the impact of that negative recommendation. Now once you have identified the key investors that you want to speak to, what are you going to tell them? Well, I think you have to keep your messages at this time pretty short and sweet. This is going to be for most organizations that have a fiscal year end at the, uh, at the calendar year end. It's going to be a very busy time for the people reviewing the proxies. So when you go to the investors, you're going to focus very much on what are the particular criticisms of your program. You're going to develop a message that talks about why your program is supportive of your talent management strategy, which in turn is supportive of your business strategy. And why are our compensation programs appropriately designed and why do they make sense in the light of all circumstances. So very focused, um, very much around delivering that message, asking what the investors are concerned about. Oftentimes they're not concerned about the same things that show up in the ISS report and you want them to have a very strong feeling that you are interested in what they think and you're interested in addressing their concerns. And then I think, of course, you're going to ask them whether or not they're going to vote with you as opposed to with an ISS at the end of the day. Okay, so let's say that you're successful, you sway enough voters to avoid following the ISS recommendation, and you pass the vote. Most of, most of the companies who pass the vote after an ISS recommendation are in that sort of 70% approval rating or a little bit low, and they're going to be under additional scrutiny going forward. So I think you really need to determine first is this a plan problem that's going to go away simply because there was a particular issue with either relative TSR or with the compensation of the CEO during the prior three-year period that's going to be different in the next year? So, for example, huge bonus or a huge option grant, something like that, made three years ago that's going to drop out of next year's calculation. I think you look at all of the issues that were raised by ISS and potentially raised by the shareholders when you talk to them and determine whether or not changes to those kinds of things, so uh, change of control gross-ups in grandfathered CEO employment agreements, things like that, could be changed without damaging the program because frankly there's some low-hanging fruit out there and making some changes is going to demonstrate a willingness to engage with shareholders and take shareholder concerns into consideration. So I think there is active engagement, there is potential redesign. I think there is an opportunity in the off-season to go talk to ISS, Glass-Lewis, the key shareholders, to continue to engage with them so that they are fully supportive of your efforts to make sure that they've had input and that you're trying to do what is the best thing long run for the shareholders. Well, that's great, Dave. I want to thank you for that. I think hopefully people learn a lot from it. Uh, this is Steve Panaccio with Pfizer for World at Work with Dave Swinford at Pearl Meyer and Partners. Thank you, Steve.